another one of my test stations this is a uh, late 40s DC motor uh, which called an open frame that is you can see everything and it looks very similar to the old original AC alternating current but this is a direct current there's only two wires going to this motor and it will run now this is a more modern day DC can motor they call it a can because all of this open frame stuff is put inside a can uh, the magnets are inside here, the armature, everything, the bearings. But it's geared uh, similarly. This one is actually what's called an S, so it's a slow motor, meaning it's geared lower. It's a little noisy. It has like a grinding noise because it's not quite the right pitch, but it does function. And as you can see, it gives us quite a bit of spin. That's a 10, that's a 10 volt, and it's pulling about 6 amps. In spite of all that racket, it's running pretty good. Now this fellow, when I first got it and put it on the grid, it would hardly run. And when it did, I had to help it kickstart it and it was running about three amps. Since then, I've added some super magnets to the original um, magnet, which had seemed to have lost quite a bit of its zip uh, as a 1948, so it's 60 years old magnet. Permanent magnets are not permanent. Um, so I've added a little bit of zip to it. Let's see what happens. It started out at two, dropped to one and a half. Now it's at one and it's still dropping. So it's about a 0 .8. 0 .8 and it's spinning quite well. And this is not a reduced drive. This is a, a, the original gear ratio. So you're getting quite a bit of power here at 10. So if I drop it to five, drop it to, to three, you're going to get around four. You're going to get around. Now, how much power do we have? Eh, not too bad. Not too bad. I get it up about six. It's, it's a little more difficult to stop it and slow it down. So you're going to be running six uh, volts to get going somewhere. But now, if I crank this baby up, I'm at 10. I'm at 13. I'm at 14. I'm at 15. I'm at 16, flat out. That thing is humming. I'm telling you. And look at that. It's pulling less than 7 amps. Look at that. I'm dropping it down. There's the 10. So we're around 7 amps. Uh, 0.7 amps, actually, drawing. So now I flip back over. Little roll there. Flip back over to the, my buzz bomb here. And I know it's noisy. Now, there's 5 volts. At three volts, you don't even get, you barely get a rev. So I got to get up to four, maybe five, or four and a half. Four and a half, you get a good steady. And I, I can stop it, but it pulls pretty good. So I'm thinking both of them are going to have about the same operational capabilities. Get it up to 10, up to 11 and 12. There's flat out. It's still pulling about 0.4. So it's cruising. It's cruising as good as it can. It's a noisy critter, I know. Let me get it back to it. Get it back to five volts. Let's make a comparison. There's five volts. And there's this guy. He likes to warm up somehow, but anyway, he's at he's at 0.55 or 0.6. And he's humming along pretty good. He's humming along pretty good. It's a little slower. You can see that. He's got a lower gear ratio, but by golly, he's at 5, 0.5 exact. This guy gets down to 0. 0.6, so, you know, it's not too shabby for a 60-year-old open frame DC motor versus current state-of-the-art DC can. The gear noise is just the, the way this one runs. Uh, there are others that are smoother, but the point is the same AC AC current coming in is rectified underneath this cap. There's a rectifier. That means it takes AC, chops off the bottom, and turns it into direct. And it sends that direct voltage out to both of these engines, and they both run the same. But, interesting, I think I'm going to make an experiment of a, of a uh, old-style AC motor and see if I can convert it. <gasps> To a DC. Would that be fun?
Let's see what happens later.